Hello everyone at the New England Regional Genealogical Conference. I'm Brooke Schreier Gans and I'm sorry I couldn't be with you today, but I am home in California. I have two little kids here and I have to be taking care of the current generations instead of researching all the fun older generations. But thank you for allowing me to talk to you over video today and thank you to the Massachusetts Genealogical Council for the Shirley Barnes Records Access Award. This is very kind of you and it's very appreciated. Um, as genealogists, you all know that records access records are the backbone of what we do. Everything we're doing is based on what this record says, but how does it conflict with this record and which one is more credible? But what do you do when the records you want to research are just not available to you? Or you know they exist, but they are out of your hands. They are being held in repositories who don't want to make them available to the public. Well, that is a thing that I struggled with a lot. Um, my background in records activism came about because I am a genealogist, but I am not a professional genealogist. I just researched this for myself because I'm obsessive and, and I was doing my own family history and my family background is from New York, about 95% from New York. And the other 5%, I should point out, is from New England. It's from New Haven, Connecticut, and one branch that moved around a little bit in Massachusetts, including Holyoke and Springfield. So there's my New England cred for you today. Um, but, but the majority of my own family background came through New York City and New York State. And I always thought I'd be living in New York, too, and have access to these great repositories, which do have great records if you're on site. It can physically go during the day, during business hours. But that isn't possible for everybody, and it definitely wasn't possible for me after I moved to California in 2003 when I got married and moved out here. And year after year would go by, and I would be very frustrated that these records were not really going online, not even basic indexes for vital records. And I just got more and more frustrated. Um, a lot of my background comes from Eastern Europe, and it would be amazing to me to see countries like Poland scanning their old books and putting them online, beautiful, high-definition copies, totally free, no logins, no usernames or passwords, just here, here are the records. We think this is an important thing to make available. But then I could get these records from, say, 1825, but then when my family got to America and was happily living in New York in 1925, I couldn't get anything, practically, other than federal records that were already online, like the census. And this gnawed at me, and I got frustrated. And eventually this frustration boiled up to the point where I sued New York City to get copies of records. I realized that these records are available under freedom of information laws. They're government records. They were created with government money. They're held in government repositories. They're old, so there's no privacy problem. And these repositories, whether they're a state department of health or a city clerk's office or a city municipal archive, or even the National Archives, they are subject to these laws. And that was the big change in the thinking like, oh, I don't need to be a supplicant anymore begging for access to these records and copies of these records. I can just tell them that they are required to give me a copy of these records. I'll pay you for the copies, but you have to give these records over to people. And that was the big change in our thinking. And it's been amazingly successful. I'm proud to say we founded an organization called Reclaim the Records. And what we do is go around to repositories who have not wanted to share these records and tell them, no, you really are going to share these records and make them available, or we're going to see you in court. And so far, that's working out very well for us. We have four successful lawsuits under our belt and many more in progress at the moment. Um, so I am really happy to see that an organization like the Massachusetts Genealogical Council is recognizing the importance of records activism and active work, not just meeting as a genealogy group to discuss our great grandmas, but to actually actively make this stuff more available to everyone, whether you are at home with little kids in California and can't get to see your, your local records repository, or whether you're in town but you just want to see government agencies share more broadly the wonderful things they, they have been holding, um, and which they have not been able to make available to the general public. So, I'm sorry to say that I never got to meet Shirley Barnes, um, the woman for whom this award is named. She was... She was the longtime civil records director for the Massachusetts Genealogical Council, and she sounds like she was an amazing person who really took the time to do activism and work and, you know, pounded the pavement to get laws changed and made it very obvious in her community that everybody deserves to have access to these records, for which our taxes pay and our ancestors' taxes pay to be kept in the first place. So I am I'm grateful to her legacy, and I hope to be able to live up to it. And I am thankful to all of you for recognizing that records activism 
is an important part of being a genealogist to make sure that these things are not lost and are not made unavailable. So thank you to everybody. Thank you to the Massachusetts Genealogical Council. Thank you especially to Barbara Matthews and to Francine Griffiths for putting this all together. And I hope to be with you in a future conference when my kids are a little older. But in the meantime, everybody enjoy your conference and have a great day. Thanks. Bye.